Hello and welcome to this full length beginner to advanced custom rigged character from scratch using both Adobe Illustrator and Cartoon Animator 5. Now you can use other vector software. I just am a, an Adobe enthusiast and I get it done pretty fast in Adobe Illustrator. With that said, I've had a number of people comment in my past tutorials that I need to speed up my tutorials, make them a little bit quicker. But in reality, although I agree with you wholeheartedly and I will make uh, animation in a minute tutorials, if you subscribe to my channel, you'll be alerted to those when they come up for tips and tricks and, and quick tutorials. In order to get you up to speed and to make a fully custom rigged character from scratch like you see here on screen, this cute little gal, with her expressions, her 360 degree head, her eyes, her eyebrows, her mouths, her hands. We're looking at a minimum of five hours spent getting this character ready. Now, before you click away and say, oh no, I don't have that kind of time, um, I can set up a character in 15 minutes. It just completely depends on what you wanna do. Now with this one, I wanted it to be extremely perfectionist perfect and that includes everything from the the head turns to the hair to the spring bones to numerous more than necessary mouth sprites more than necessary eye sprites i mean i have five eye sprites for crying that you'll see play here in the background in a minute so don't be discouraged that this took me year three five hours i can create a character from scratch in 15 minutes and if you go to my channel, and I'll put a link in the description to my production channel, my kids' channel, um, those characters literally took 15 minutes each, and it was quick. Um, however, this one I wanted to create in perfection so it could be a good teaching instrument for those who are trying, trying to get into animation using Cartoon Animator and the whole rigging process. So yes, this is Cartoon Animator 5, and yes, this is Adobe Illustrator, but some of the principles that we talk about here work in Moho, Adobe Animate, Toon Boom Harmony, um, and other software where you can set up a, a cutout rig is what it's called. So that's why these tutorials are longer and without dragging this on any longer, let's get started. Uh, please do watch through the entire thing. I will have time stamps. And the reason you need to watch through the entire thing is because it goes step by step from scratch on how to set up a vector character in Cartoon Animator. I do have timestamps down in the description, so please bear with me if it feels like it's dragging on. Welcome to animation, um, especially welcome to properly done OCD animation in a character like this. So thank you for being here. Please like and subscribe, and let's get started. All right, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to do uh, something that I do often when I'm working on my... Uh, family friendly children's YouTube shorts is we're going to take a new character. This one I got as a licensed stock image from Adobe Stock. I will leave a link in the description. Um, and we're going to turn her into a fully rigged character so we can use it in our animations. Um, to do this, the first step we're going to take is open up Cartoon Animator 5 using the Rare Illusion Hub. Going to click on products over here and click open. I'm on version 5.02. And it is already open, so here it is. Um, it may prompt you, depending on how often you've opened this up, to download content. I always click yes, because it updates the content, um, et cetera, et cetera. So what we need to do is we need to create a new character. So I'm gonna go to the Create menu, Create Character. I want an SVG human template, and it's gonna open it up for me in Illustrator. And if it doesn't for you, I think you have to assign it here as your SVG editor, which you can do under editor, ed, edit menu, project settings. Um, there we go, vector. It's been a while since I've seen this. And then you assign Adobe uh, Illustrator or whatever program you have. Mine is Illustrator uh, for the preferences. You may have to restart Cartoon Animator 5. Go ahead if you need to. And then once that's open, it what it does is if you go to create, create character, SVG for for a vector character it opens up this template not the prettiest thing to see um, But here it is now you have this first layer if you don't see your layers panel just go to window layers and it'll show up 
Um, this is the ones you can turn off. It just kind of helps you guide uh, guide you as to what and where you need to put things with some more explanations, your right and your left side. Um, but these are the three con folders that are going to concern us the most. So first step is to come over. I like to drag this open. This is our character we're going to focus, focus on. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Now, because we're working in Illustrator previously, I had to do this before. And, you know, if you have a custom character you've drawn, um, everything's already kind of designed that way. But this is just a vector from uh, Adobe Stock Photo. And so we're kind of starting from scratch, more or less, with some guidance here. And there's just a few things we need to tweak. So you can do it here or here. I'm going to do it in its own window because it is vector. It can be sized to anything. And it's cleaner to do it here than it is to have to try to work with all of this. So I'm just going to stay in this window and quickly clean this up. If you're already familiar with this process, go ahead and skip this video or look in the time, uh, in the description and I'll have timeline stamps so you can skip this process. All right, so I'm going to zoom in and open up and drag her up to the top. So I am working just with her I'm going to turn off everybody else so I don't have to worry about it. And let's just start getting to work now. It's a lot more friendly to have characters like this um, when we have smooth shapes. So her legs are the first thing that need to be uh, smoothed out. Now, if I come down here, it looks like they're all square. So I'm just going to zoom out and I'm using the A selector tool. We'll do a quick tutorial here as well. And I click on a leg, shift, click on another leg. And then I hold, hold down. Uh, nope, just kidding. I don't. I use this little tool here. I forget what it's called. I just click and drag and that smooths them out for me. Perfect, legs are good. Um, we may have some issues with her hips, so I'm gonna bring these. I'm using the A, A selector, the direct selector, and I'm just clicking, shift, clicking, and now I'm just using those two, and I'm gonna click and shift and drag that down to there, and it just drug those shapes down a bit. And I don't like how far up her legs are here, so I'm gonna just click and drag these, and it looks like, um, it looks like it's, it's Whenever it does this from some of these, it creates two little points here. And so if I click on one and drag, see how there's two points there? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate this shape. And I'm not seeing my, my bar here, so I'm going to go to Window, Workspace, Classic, and Window, Workspace, and just going to reset that. Well, it's not showing up, and I don't know why. So I'm going to go back to Workspace Classic. It's, it's showing up, and I'll deal with that later. So now I can see the Isolate tool here. So I'm going to click that, and now this is isolated. And the reason I did that is so I can just click, drag, select without clicking something else. So now I have those top two, and I have those. So I'm going to click all of those. If I'm going fast, just slow this down. You can slow this, the speed down on YouTube. And I'm shift selecting. Now, I want it to come to the edge of where um, the, the points meet. So you see that point there and the point of her hip? I, I want those to kind of meet right there to kind of give it a good... Uh, non-breaking point, if that makes any sense. So I'm done with that. So I'm going to go all the way back out to the kids from isolation mode. And now if I compare those two, they're pretty similar, but I'm going to delete this one, copy this one by direct selector tool. A is the shortcut. Alt, click and drag. Shift to keep it in place. Boom. I have her two legs. Perfect right there. So now we're going to come down and she has these interesting shoes. And it looks like the shoes go okay so that's her actual skin so we what we'd want to do is keep this so we could put her in shorts and do different things like that so i'm going to keep her leg there and i'm going to grab these points here and i'm going to do the same thing and smooth them out and i'm going to just uh drag it down to match the other one let's see, let's see where it says intersect right there and now that and that should be basically the same. What I don't want is like an outline of the, the leg. Like you see, well, no, I don't see. Any. If, if it is like that, I don't want these little rogue pieces like that. So I'm going to undo that. All right, so let's zoom back out. And it's looking good. Let's put that shoe back on. That'll be a front-facing shoe. I'm going to bring it down because I brought her leg down. And then we'll do some side shoes and different things like that as needed. So that's looking good. So now I'm going to take all three of these. I'm going to get rid of the shadow. I don't want it. I'm going to take all three of those. And I'm going to go back over to my window layers and make sure they're all selected. Not uh, See how this has a small square? That's because I didn't select these because I don't want to 
you know, click on all that. So what I do is I can do that, or I can do shift click, and that, that selects it. And what I'm trying to do is just select the whole object. If I use the selector tool, it'll select everything in the group, in the layer group. And I don't want to do that on this. I want to just select the leg. And so I just shift click that, and now it's selected, but it selected both legs. So let's get rid of that leg. And now we have the legs. I'm going to drag that out. I'm going to group those. So now I have an actual leg group right here. I'm going to just name this, bring my layers panel out. And I know I'm going 100 miles per hour, but if this is too fast for you, this is going to be leg uh, camel casing here, a left side. Okay, and then I'm just going to click and drag this again over to here. Looks like I forgot the shoe. This is going to be leg right okay and before i go any further file save as and i'm just going to call this a uh, girl zero zero let's just call her girl zero three why not and i'm going to save it on my computer so i know where it's at and for me let's go to my icloud um, animation uh, this is my uh, family set simple vectors new folder art edited i'm going to call this girl zero how do we call it i don't even remember zero three <laughs> okay great now i have this edited file and i can just throw away the rest of these ones because i don't need them in here because i've saved this i'm going to zoom out and get rid of all of these and now I have just this girl that I'm working on. I'm going to, because it's a vector, I'm going to select it all with the v, v for selector tool. Shift. It's going to bring her size up a bit. Oh, interesting. Let me undo. What it's doing is it's uh, resizing everything, like even her cheekbones, if you saw that. So I'm just going to leave it there for now. There's You can go to edit preferences and change the uh, way that it sizes. I'm trying to remember where it's at. Um, is it here? And it's where you resize everything. It's You can Google this. It's been a while. Let's see. Scale strokes and effects. There it is. And that should fix it right there. <clears throat> so now if I go like this and zoom out, I just selected everything. No, it still does it, doesn't it? So now she's no longer has that round face um, and I, I'll have to figure that out later. So it is vector, so I'm not too concerned. I'm just going to leave it as is because you can make it as big or as small as you want. And now Cartoon Animator 5 supports that. Um, let's do put her shoes over her feet just so we can see them. Oh, that's her eyeballs. Whoops, that's her shoe right there. And now if I zoom in. <clears throat> Her legs are almost done. Um, and on this type of a character, I'm not doing separate. I'll show you when we get over to the template here. I'm not going to actually do separate, um, uh, what do you call those, shins, or they call them shanks. I forgot the word for a minute there. And separate thighs and separate feet. On this, they're just going to be all one. Um, and I can do that because it is vector now sometimes you'll want to separate it but i think it looks best these are more simple bendy characters and it's really easy to animate and so i'm just going to leave it as it is <clears throat> and so we're going to take the shoe direct selector tool to alt tool click and drag okay that looks great so her legs are done let's look at her hips and her waist <clears throat> that looks okay i'm actually happy with that so let's take this and this and let's group them and we're going to call this her hip and we want this neck to be part of it i'm not a big fan of such a giant neck uh, such small arms um hard to say what i'm going to do is just select those and round that out and then i'm going to bring it's going to probably have a double here i'm going to shift up yep so i just need to grab that one shift up Again, I'm using the direct selector tool using shortcuts of shift, alt, 
different shortcuts. If you're not familiar with Illustrator, it's very helpful to go through a tutorial on shortcuts and just get used to moving around with your space bar, your A key, your V key for the selector tool, and just shifting and A, selecting certain uh, anchor points, and you know, just getting used to things like that. <clears throat> All right, that's looking good. Um, I'm going to shrink her neck a, a tiny bit. I'm not a huge fan. V and then Alt. Just enough there. I think that's a little better. Um, her head is massive. So I'm going to select her head and separate it by getting all the parts. There we go. And I'm just going to use Alt. Oh, that, that didn't work. Let's try that again with her eyes. And then Alt, I missed. I'm just going to shrink it down a bit. I want her to be a little bit more um, to size. OK, cool. I like that a lot. I think that looks much better. Her neck nub is a little too high now. I'm just going to go down, shift too much. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then I'm just going to drag this down using shift to keep it straight. Click and shift. That's better. I'm going to do the same thing here. Um, she doesn't need to have such a long neck line. And I'm going to go click, click, one. Shift one two three four and I'm just kind of just kind of playing around with it till I like it. <clears throat> I think that's much better. I'm gonna bring her shoulders. Uh, I don't know if I want to make them more square or not. That's kind of fun too to have her a little bit more rounded, but we'll keep it right about there. And what we'll do is we're gonna get rid of the bendy one. That's really cool. And we'll look at hands in just a minute. And I'm just going to use this one, um, and I'm going to actually bring it. Uh, this one's a sleeveless, so it's a little different. If I bring her arm in and up, all these arms, because she's sleeveless, what I like to do is I like to bring it out so we can see the shoulder and then just kind of modify this here. So I'm going to add another point using the P. Uh, so A, selected it, P for pen tool, add a point. And now I can click and drag this over and this and this. Just bear with me here. That and then P for pen tool, Alt. And I find this allows us, that's a little bit too big of a shoulder. Six, I'm going to get rid of that. And bring this back over a little bit. So now, uh, when we are rotating it, it's that instead of, you know. And the only problem with that is this here. So um, I don't think she'll be going, well, I don't think she'll be going like that too much because we'll bend it. It doesn't function like that. We'll bend it. But I, I like that. So. That's how that works. So we're going to go ahead and uh, make a copy. Alt V over. And then we go O. And then shift, click, and drag. And that flips it 90 degrees. And the other way to do that um, is to use object transform reflect. OK, so we've got her arms squared away. I'm going to bring this one out a little bit. And I don't like how square her arms are, so I'm going to go ahead and click on these two here and give it more uh, roundness there. Shift, and I'm using the A selector tool again. There we go. That's a little bit rounder. I'm OK with that. And yeah, she's looking good. So now that I've got the arms, the, the hips, uh, the, the legs, the feet all together. Um, we need to go through and get the eyes and the mouth squared away. Now, I did do a previous uh, character, and I, I worked on a bunch of mouths and eyes. So I'm going to pause this, snag those, and show you how I put them all together. Otherwise, what you can do is you can go and find um, on something like uh, Adobe Stock Photo, 
uh, Adobe stock image or free pick also and you can just do um, like something like animation mouths and then search by uh, vectors and then you have all these different animation mouths and you can kind of I like to just pull it aside I have a big screen and decide which ones would look best for these characters um, you could try something like simple um, just you know and find ones that work for you um, another search you can do is phonemes phoneme mouths Let's see if that pulls up same thing phonemes um, but this way they're specifically a all the vowels and sounds and different things and I'll show you where those go so you can find them you can make your own you can use this as a template I like to drag in one of these and then just according to the art style um, make my own versions right that match my art style so I'm gonna go grab those bear with me for a minute alright so I found the file I was looking for I had done this girl previously I couldn't find it on the boy one so here it is don't let this alarm you but this I could have used this and just redone the template with this girl but I like to start fresh for tutorials because you got to know exactly what's going on um, but here's her mouths so I'll drag these over and I created these mouths from a file a reference file uh, that I got from FreePick. and I'm just gonna drag these on over and put them now you can go get your own um, you can use the ones I'll put a link in the description or you can go get one of the characters that I have made um, whatever you want to do to make it easy for you but there they are uh, shift click and drag those and put them in place here and those are my mouths for my simple girls and now that I have those I'm gonna minimize that and I'm gonna go get rid of the mouth that was there by default which I believe was that delete great now I don't like the color here I'm gonna click that here a selector so it's all selected and I click this little select similar objects and I'm gonna change the color from that brownish I'm just get a little bit darker because this is simple vectors I'm not too concerned with um, the color but like in Cartoon Manager 5 you can change these colors so I'll keep it somewhat colored just darker and then that's the chin so I'm not worried the neck I'm not worried about that but at first I was like what is that there so that needs to go in the hip as part of the hip the neck does I thought it was a chin all right so good now I'm going to go get the eyes from my previous one and again the same thing here I went and I just found uh, some reference eyes Right, so I just went to animation eye expressions, something like that, either there or on free pick. And you just look at some. And if not here, I like to go to Pinterest and I just search for something like you know, animation eye expressions. And there's so many references you can draw from, um, learn from, and then like I'll do uh, emoji. I think on these ones I did emoji because they're so simple if I can spell right there we go um, so I expressions emoji and yeah so something like that that's in fact I think this is the exact one I used uh, for I expressions in fact I'm probably gonna do a couple more because I really like how uh, these eyes are like for days to confuse so let me go grab the ones I have and we'll see what those are so I just grab these eyes I'm gonna grab both the left and the right and select them bring them on over and I'm still not done with this so I'm gonna leave it here because I need those hands and so I'm gonna zoom out now with vectors shift click they can be any size and still be uh, correct so I'm just gonna center them on the face there I know the center I'm just eyeballing it play on words with that right there that's the center I could use a ruler con uh, control R turn the ruler on and off I could find the center point anyways I'm I'm happy with those I'm gonna change the colors on all of these by uh, selecting all similar objects zoom out make sure I didn't select anything else and I'm gonna make the eyes all black 
and do the same thing with these. Uh, Alt, I'm on the direct selector to tool, and I clicked on a path, so I have to hold down Alt, and then it'll select all of it for me. Similar, and this time I want the stroke to be all black. Great, and we're good there. Now, the reason why they look all squonky is because I have every single one here, and I'm gonna group each one of these so that the eyes um, that did not work. Let's undo, undo. So if I want to group those, oh, I accidentally grouped the whole body. So group this is going to be I um, right, and then over here, this is going to be I on I left. So what we want to do is let's look at the eyes. Um, let's go to both of these folders and just look at normal. And these are the ones that uh, Ray Illusion uses as default. I'm going to add the ones that came with this because they're they are cute. So I'm going to go grab those and create another folder. So first let's color them. So I selected them both, I, and now they're the same color. And let's move them up. That's better. And I think that's going to work there. Um, and then they have to be in a folder. And so I'm going to create a copy of this. And which eye is this? It's left. So this one comes in here. And I'm going to get rid of this iris. I just basically copied it. And I'm going to use normal, smaller. And then I'm just going to delete that one and copy this one and bring it over to this side. And I don't need to flip it because um, it's not like shaped to where it needs to be flipped different. And there we go. So now we have a, a new normal. <laughs> and then we have normal. And then we have smile closed. Then we have eye closed, etc., etc. Uh, scared clothes, I squint, and you know, we could go on and on. So, the important thing about this is a super really it's a simple one, it's not complex eyes at all, and that's the whole point of this is just simple, expressive characters that can be used in your animation. Now, I am going to add some eyes, like I said, I really liked uh, these ones right there, those little I don't know what you call those swirly eyes. Um, and I'm going to probably add like those kissy lips on the lips if I don't have them. So I'm going to go ahead and visit. Now this is a link to Etsy. I, I'm totally fine with finding inspiration and not having to buy something uh, with something like this because you can find these all over the place. I also like the X eyes and so I really like these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this image. And uh, let's go to downloads. Sure. <coughs> <coughs> and I'm sure I could find them here <coughs> if you're concerned. You could do um, emoji eyes. Let's see if we could just find them on free pick. Uh, there's some, not my favorite. I middle clicked on those. Um, middle click on those. I'm just kind of looking for the simple emoji eye expressions for these characters. And you could spend hours and hours. There's so many different inspiring different uh, types of um, art styles here. Oh man, there's so many. Okay, so let's just go look what we have. Uh, these ones, these are a little bit different. They're a little more artistically styled, which I'm not looking for in these. These are more plain. Um, I have that. Um, I could do some feminine ones. Those are fun. <laughs> Could do that for expression lists and things. I don't see the swirly one, so I'm gonna I'm gonna log in and download those ones. Okay. Boom. And so I'm gonna download those, or I could just use them as a reference, depending on what you want to do. Um, those are quite expressive. Uh, I kind of like that idea there. Um, so let me hit refresh and. Let's do that. I like that. The teardrop's cool. We could use that as a prop. 
coming out as an eye. And then let's do one more. Let's look here. I like the squint idea here, but it's kind of too uh, expressive, but that's kind of fun. Let's, why not? Let's just, let's just add a couple more here. So download. What I'm looking for is just options of eye expressions. The more we have, I think, the more we can do with these simple, simple characters and be expressive and emotive in our designing and animation. So I've got those three. I'm going to go to my downloads folder and come on windows and go and today i'm going to open up no nope, that's not it did i or did i not download those downloads show there they are i just had to hit refresh because i'm in windows still getting used to windows okay so i've got that one i guess i have to do them separately Mac is so much more intuitive with uh, these types of you know, tasks. Windows is still, after decades of using it, just frustrating as all get out. All right, got them all open. Let's clean up a little bit. Don't need all these windows open. Great. Um, so zoom in, commit control zero, control zero, control zero. So let's take our first one. And let's go ahead and do, I really like the idea of these eyes. So I'm going to delete the background there. I'm going to grab those eyes. And I also like uh, the idea of these eyes. We don't have eyebrows, so I guess we could add eyebrows. Um, that would be fun on some, uh, some of them. In fact, these are all fun. So the easiest way to do this, rather than just pick and choose, is just select them all. Oops, I'm not on a Mac, I'm on a PC, control all. Drag them over. Uh, let's go ahead and close this one because we don't need it, don't need to save it. And before we do anything, so we don't make a mess, see them all over here, let's group them, control G. Move them over, and now we have these fun expressive eyes to work with. Um, they already are kind of at the, um, they need to be a little bit bigger. That's actually pretty uh, helpful that they're kind of already at this right size. Um, I'm going to turn on my normal eyes so I can kind of get more of a realistic size here. And, you know, that's that's actually pretty spot on right there. So I'm going to go like this. Shift, I'm holding down shift, so look at that. <laughs> In fact, we could add all these mouths. I mean, that's the fun. You could take any of these characters and add any of these that you want into your repertoire. In fact, some of these I like a lot better than what I have. So first of all, I'm going to change all the colors of these. I actually kind of like their color better. What color is that? Let's just go in there. So they're like a, a, a lighter black. I can just darken it a little bit and select everything that has that color. Change it. Do the same thing with these paths. Alt click. Um, select everything that has the path, change that, and so now everything is matching. Now I'm going to take my colors, I'll select that one, and change them all to that color. Same with my filled shapes, select all the similar ones, and change it to that color. So now they're all matching that color, and I like that a lot better. That is super fun. And I, I actually like it a lot better as the lip color too. So I'm going to go ahead and um, do the same with the lips and change those. Perfect. Cool. Love it. So now we have <laughs> these fun new mouths that we can add as well. So we just need to uh, sort through these and name them and make sure that they are all aligned where we want them. So the easiest way to do that is to hit them all in that group that we grouped together, center line, and I need to take them out of the group to get them to all actually center and center. Now they're easier to work with. <clears throat> and it's gonna be a little bit of a mess. So now I can regroup them and start working with them one by one. And so let's turn them all off. And we have the straight lines. And one thing we can do 
which is fun for me. Okay, we have these new cheek expressions. I think we're gonna add those. So we're gonna enhance this character. We've got eyebrows. So I'm gonna put the brows up here, call them eyebrows. And all of this is gonna change when we bring it into here, but I don't like to confuse myself. It's like three times the work um, just mentally. So I just always just start in my separate file and then I go over to the template. Um, all right, so let's go, uh, looks like this path, let's see, didn't get the update. So A, Alt select, uh, click everything with that. And there, now they're updated to the color that we chose. Uh, same with these, did this not get everything selected? Let's see, no it didn't. Okay, cool. So now if we want, we have some eyebrows and we have some new cheeks. So some blush, these are all separate uh, things in the face for the rigged and I'll show that in a minute. Again, this tutorial is just customizing a graphic and getting it ready to be a rigged character. It does take, it is a process still, um, which I, I, many people are requesting real illusion update. And we haven't even got to the hair yet and the ears. All right, so we're gonna go cheek blush. Great. And, but even if you're just watching this for perspective sake to see what it takes, it, I hope it's helpful. And then we've got the nose. We'll make a new nose group. I'm gonna keep doing this. You're welcome to uh, do this on your own. I'm gonna time lapse through it, but it's just a matter of adding as many or as little as you like. So here we go. Now what you see me doing here is working on the hands. Now you can custom make these, you can find hands on Freepik, on Adobe Stock. I'm using the ones that came with the template and I'm just gonna simplify them and shrink them down. But basically what you're doing here is you're just copying the template um, hands. Now if you created your own, you just need to look at the shape of the hands and how the fingers are set and different things. I played around with quite a few of them and you see me just kind of going through here figuring out how I want these hands to look to match my character. But that's what this time lapse is showing here. And once the hands are done, um, what I do is I go through and I just make sure every little point and detail is where we want it to be. So I'm getting the shoes done here and then I'm just making sure the legs and the waist are where I like it. I'm making sure that the skin doesn't show up behind the legs, the pants, just making them a little bit smaller. I do like to save everything originally and, and you see there I just copied and moved it over so I duplicated rather than redo the work twice. Um, and then with the hair, I like to make sure I have a left and a right piece on most characters and then a back piece and in this case we have a back bun and a back ponytail. Now this part is important I could have rounded it off a little bit more, but this giant square piece is to allow us when we create the 360 head to uh, not have ball spots. And I'll show you that in just a minute. This is still time lapsed, so we can save some time, but I will slow this down as soon as we import it. So I'm gonna save that as an Illustrator file, and then I'm going to click and drag all of it by doing Command, uh, excuse me, Control A on a PC, because this is correct in Editor 5. I'm just going to drag it all into the template. Once we have dragged the artwork into the template, again, this is the template that comes from Cartoon Animator 5. When you click Create Character and you've connected your vector software, um, we're going to save this template somewhere and go through the process of putting it all in its proper place. 
But I think this video is long enough. So if you want to join me in the next video, video two, we will go through the process of putting everything in its proper folders and layers in the template so that we can then get ready to export it as an SVG into Cartoon Animator 5. Please do look down in the description, like and subscribe if you'd like to be notified when each one is uploaded. We do have a Facebook group, Cartoon Animator Users, which I am there. My name is Jared Smith. Welcome to come in there, say hi, and learn from other great experienced Cartoon Animator users. And they also have different channels and tutorials. Um, but yeah, I look forward to seeing you there. And please do comment below with anything, questions, comments, concerns, anything you'd like to see as that's actually quite motivating to know what you're thinking and it helps me know what I should make next. We'll see you in the next video.